Hello everyone, I'm Mario Flario. Welcome to Mmm, a food podcast, the place where you can come to hear all about the great things happening on the local food scene, the wonderful restaurants we have, the local companies making delicious food products, the fun community events that highlight local cuisine. Joining me now is Crystal Papino from The Perfect Parcel uh, to talk about the beautiful and delicious charcuterie boards that she makes. First of all, thank you for coming in. And thank you for having me, Mario. Uh, tell us about The Perfect Parcel, how long you've been around, how you got started. Sure. So the business has been around actually for about two years now. Um, I was one of those birthed out of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, I worked in that corporate life for 12 years and I did love it. I was in hospitality at a hotel downtown. Um, but you know, paths just take you elsewhere. And this was always a hobby of mine. Um, I was curious about it becoming anything more than that when one Thanksgiving I had asked, um, I was asked to bring the cheese and crackers because they know I can't cook. So <laughs> I took offense and I said, they're gonna be the best cheese and crackers they've ever seen. So I got on Pinterest, got on YouTube and I made a great, you know, charcuterie board that then later a friend had asked if she could order one. And I, that's kind of how the, the idea sparked. Um, of course, uh, had my son during the pandemic, so thought better get all the formalities out of the way during my maternity leave, if you will. Um, so got licensed, got insured, found a commercial kitchen, and now I operate out of Warwick in Connecticut Village. Um, and so sell charcuterie boards, but predominantly teach classes. So if people want a hands-on experience, they can come to any of my classes that I jump around Rhode Island and host um, and learn how to make one themselves. Wow, so this came out of just like you going somewhere. Judgment. someone judged me. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Um, and do you feel like you've uh, even stepped up your game even more so yeah, since then? Yeah, of course. I mean, practice does always make better, I say. Yeah. Um, but. Um, yeah, you learn as you go, and you know what's really incredible is the community around the charcuterie um, business is also really empowering. Um, there's obviously a bunch of local ones that we're, um, we keep in touch, and but there's also so many, you know, in our country, worldwide, and we've got Facebook groups and kind of you know, bounce ideas off each other. And you know, if someone's already been through it, why have someone else go through the ringer? So it's been really great for me as an entrepreneur to kind of skip all that and be able to focus on what works and it's amazing i was telling you earlier how versatile cheese can be you know we do corporate team building we do virtual classes we ship kits and teach you online so there's so many ways that you can um, use this craft um, employee appreciation we do cups cones over the summer um, we've just partnered up with providence riverboat for summer so you can order a little charcuterie board for your boating experience um, there's so many things so um, I'm just around the corner. Rhode Island is small, so I do hope people will consider, um, you know, adding it on to whatever they've got going on. So you have a location in Warwick, and you can go, people can go and pick up from you. So, your, no, it's not yeah. a storefront. Um, okay. It's a commercial kitchen that I rent gotcha. out of um, just for the permitting and all of that. Um, but I do offer delivery weekdays to corporate clients. Um, and then predominantly on the weekends outside of an order here and there, people do pick up from there. Um, but I will also do grazing tables. That's been really big lately. So baby showers, bridal showers, um, even weddings. I've done one for up to 100 people where um, you just set up pretty much a giant cheese board, <laughs> a charcuterie board, and uh, your guests can kind of pick and graze throughout the event. And um, it's, it's very thoughtfully curated. So it's, you know, it doubles as decorative and delicious. Um, so yeah, so you'll go in to a place and just set it all up, right? Yeah, yep, the venue, as long as they allow for outside catering, I'm perfectly fine to be there. Um, I am licensed in Rhode Island only, so just anything local, um, but it, it doubles as decorative and delicious, and it's it's quite the wow factor too, which if you're looking for that, um, it's the route to go. Yeah, talk about in general the uh, popularity of charcuterie, and I feel like it's yeah. kind of always been around, but I mm -hmm. feel like these days it's really like, the thing. Huh? So I get that comment a lot about, you know, do you think this is a fad? Do you think it will die out? Um, and it's interesting you say that because it definitely was super trendy. Uh, I would say maybe mid-year last year. It really just picked up and got really popular. Um, but like you said, cheese and crackers or charcuterie, it's been around forever. What we've done is just kind of keep it up with the times in regards to all the creatives that are out there. Um, it definitely serves as a creative outlet for me. You know, we're playing with food, but truly it's an art in a sense where um, it can be a little therapeutic but also you're just displaying something that's so beautiful I always say you eat with your eyes first so um, we just put a creative spin on it and I think that a lot of people um, are geared towards things that not only taste great but look great exactly yeah. visual yeah yes. a lot of it is what you see when I say I have a charcuterie business people, oh that's very nice you know and then I'm like no 
you know, I show them my Instagram profile or something, and they're like, oh. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. like artwork, really. Yeah, it, and it's fun. You know, you get lost in it. Yeah. There's so many things. What is the key to a good charcuterie board? Well, I, I always <laughs> kind of go back to my styling guide. It's the simple five-step rule. So you can get really elaborate and crazy with it, um, but ultimately, you want premium ingredients, so that's always really key. Um, but it starts with the cheese. You want to offer an array of flavors and textures. So I always try and uh, gravitate towards maybe a goat, a brie, a cheddar and manchego because you're representing different, um, you know, soft, hard cheeses, but then also different flavor profiles. You've got sheep's milks, cows, um, goat's milk. So you're really covering all bases there. Then a good charcuterie. You want to make sure you're getting it from a sourced um, place or your favorite type. There's so many out there. Um, anchors is the next one. I always say you want to put anything in a ramekin or a honey or a jam on your board so that you start to build from the biggest item down to the smallest. So then, of course, your produce and nuts and anything that you can fill in the little gaps with. And you always want to garnish your boards. It's super important to give it that fresh look at the end. Yeah. Um, how important is, is color important too? Yeah, actually there's um, a lot of science, believe it or not. People kind of laugh when I, when I talk about it, but there, there's a lot of research behind placement of colors and whatnot. Um, keeping like colors away from each other is actually pretty important too for it to really pop and elevate at the end. Um, but you know, on a theme like let's say th uh, Valentine's Day or Christmas, you gear towards you know the redder fruits and the redder produce or purples. Um, but ultimately, um, there's research out there that says our brains are stimulated by seeing things in either pairs or sets of three. So in a lot of my boards, you'll notice that I purposely place apricots, oranges, um, whatever's orange, the honey, in three different spots to kind of um, you know trick the consumer now <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, really yeah. To, to set off those sensors and hopefully um, get them excited to enjoy their board yeah and so it was interesting so the word charcuterie is that's actually the meat part it of it It is, and it's funny in class i always say um you know people will tell me i'm gonna bring over a dessert charcuterie board crystal you're gonna love it or movie night charcuterie board and i have to laugh because i'm thinking to myself we're talking popcorn wrap prosciutto you know what what yeah <laughs> right. the charcuterie literally means you know cured meat dried hung over time so um if it doesn't have meat on your board if we're just doing a bunch of fabulous cheeses it's a cheese board which is great um charcuterie is the meat so unless there's meat on it it's it's not a charcuterie board <laughs> mm. And are there particular types you think that work better, or is it just whatever you well, like? Well, it depends what you're styling. Um, if there's a theme you're trying to cater to, for example, for Valentine's, you're probably going to do a lot of salami roses, so salami is probably going to be a key ingredient. Um, however, uh, if you can be versatile, like on a graze table, when you um, you know provide however many ounces of meat and cheese, you can really play around with prosciutto. You can play around with supersada. You've got copa, peppered salami. There's so many great options. Um, so you know, get creative. And there's a way, believe me, to style everything. <laughs> so multiple ways, actually. So it can be really fun. You know, people, I have people come to my classes, you know, three, four times because, you know, you change it out as a creative. You want to change up the cheeses. You don't want to do the same thing every time. So you're learning something new every time. Um, so it's a lot of fun. Yeah. So when people come in to actually take a class, like what's, how do you go about um, teaching them, especially someone who's a novice really doesn't know what they're doing. Yeah, so um, most of my classes are beginner's classes, but because I have so many that come multiple times, I've actually just launched an advanced course. Ooh. So where we, we kind of take it to the next level. Um, but it really, it, if you break it down, and my, my first tip whenever we start a class is prep is key. I find a lot of people get very nervous about making a board because time temperature control. I've had students tell me, I get nervous, I feel like I'm on the clock the second I take everything out of the fridge, but what they don't know is cheese is actually best served room temperature. It comes to its full flavor, its optimal flavor in about 20 minutes, half hour, and at that point it can stay out for up to two, three hours with, before it needs to be consumed or put back in the refrigerator or discarded. So they've got time to play around, you know, so that's the first thing, time's on your side, but then prep really is key. You don't need the three pounds of grape sitting on the counter, just grab your bunch wash what you need to wash, a couple of berries, put everything back, and be organized. Because if you're organized with what you want to put on your tray, that's where the creativity can flow. And you can do all different shapes and exactly. sizes. Exactly. Cookie yeah. cutters are ch cheese best friend. We do all kinds of stuff with cookie cutters and uh, different wire knives and utensils. And I provide all the equipment, everything you need, the ingredients, and you get to go home with your beautiful creation. Oh my gosh. So you did bring in some ingredients um, in the studio here, and you kind of gave me a very quick yeah. lesson and <laughs> it, it looks it doesn't look as pretty as the one you finished oh, when you have but let's talk about kind of what uh, we have here sure. and kind of what we did 
Yeah, so a lot of these ingredients I, of course, picked because of the um, upcoming holiday for Valentine's, so we've got a lot of heart-shaped embellishments. Um, but like I mentioned, we started out with the cheese, where we're providing a manchego, that's a sheep's milk, um, a brie, which is cows and cheddar as well. Um, if you were doing this at home, maybe throw in a goat, too, to you know provide a spreadable option. Um, but what I chose was two different types of crackers, because I like to offer um, the option of a more mild cracker to maybe a more robust and flavored cheese like the cheddar and then a crisp that does have some flavor already to go with something more neutral um, for produce I just did simple seedless grapes and some strawberries and uh, raspberries for olives I went with Castelvetrano olives they're a Sicilian olive um, which are one of my favorites um, I often convert people who don't like olives with this olive because it's pretty mild in flavor. It's not super briny and salty. It's standing up to some salty cheeses already. Um, so it's a great uh, pairing olive for sure on a charcuterie board. And just a dry Italian salami because that's a fan favorite. It's kind of the safe option. Um, you can do a lot with it. Honey, of course. If it's not honey, it's jam. I'm a big jam girl too. So mm -hmm. I love those condiments on there. And then something sweet. My husband knows when I go for the chocolate or something sweet on a board, I'm done. You know, yes. um, the pistachios in there. There. Um, you can do any nut, but I always recommend a nut maybe coated in something like a sesame almond or um, a, a shelled pistachio because they're going to hold up great in the fridge and not lose their crunch. Yeah. Yeah. When I saw the olives, I was like, um, I, I love olives and mm. I did, wasn't sure what kind this was. Yeah, it's but. not wildly salty, um, but it's a Sicilian olive, um, which, you know, I am of Spanish descent, Dominican, and I love a good salty Spanish olive. But I have to say, when it comes to my cheese boards, I gravitate towards uh, the Castelvetrano. Mm, I'm going to take a bite of yeah. that. Yeah. Mm. Great. Yeah, it's just, it, it goes really well. It's not going to steal the show. No, definitely yeah. not. It's got a good flavor, like you said, not too yep. powerful. Salty, yeah. So, tell me what this cheese is again. So that's one of my favorites, Manchego. That's a sheep's mm. milk. Um, actually, it's pretty um, going through. Uh, a little bit of a deficit right now because the sheep farmers and all of that um, in Spain, they are having a hard time keeping things in the family business and whatnot. So the demand's really high, but it's such a great cheese, super versatile. I call it a great gateway cheese. So if you're someone who maybe sticks to what you know, you go for the Colby, the mozzarella, the cheddar, um, that might be a good cheese to try to kind of venture into all the amazing cheeses out there because it's not going to be too, um, you know, punch in the face. It's, it's very mild, it has a great texture, it's crumbly. Um, not too waxy or anything, but it's one of my favorites for sure, and it pairs so well with almost everything on this board. Mm, I'm going to try that. And what's this cracker? So that's a rosemary um, fig crisp. Mm. So that's going to be great with that, actually, because it's more mild in flavor. So. Mm. Good, right? Throw a little rosemary on there, some honey. What I love about the manchego, it's so versatile. You can go, you know, the spicy or more salty route, or you could go the sweet route with some jam. Mm. Um, it's a great cheese. Mm, it's so good. Yeah. And then, of course, cheddar is kind of like a really favorite, classic sure. favorite, right? Yeah, but what we did is we crumbled it. I taught you how to crumble it today. Um, mm -hmm. Because any cheddar that's aged more than two years, this is a three-year aged cheddar, it's going to crumble fabulously. It's got a great texture. I think it throws people off. Kind of looks like a parm, right? Or a yeah. um, right. It does look like a, yes. Yeah, but it's actually a pretty robust cheddar. Um, and it's really great flavor. It packs a punch for sure. Um, and it, it lends a really nice display on the board because, um, again, it's it's not your traditional cubed look, right? Um, it gives it more of an artisan feel. Yeah. What do you think? Mm. That's so good. Yeah, with an olive because it's not too. I'm telling you, that's um, the best bite right there. <laughs> I mm -mm -mm. love a good mm. cheddar, manchego, olive, mm. crisp. And yeah. I feel like every board has to have like a soft. Like, has to have a brie, brie. or a goat, something, yeah. um, something that's going to be a little neutral. Mm -hmm. um, and the rind on brie is edible. So some people will wonder about that. Um, it's perfectly edible. It's food safe. It doesn't have much of a flavor. I guess it's more of a texture thing for people. So if, if um, for example, people who don't like the texture of sushi but love all the ingredients in sushi. Right. Um, but brie is absolutely fine to eat whole. Um, I think it's delicious. It lends really well with some honey on a car's cracker or a, f a crisp um, some strawberry I mean you can get really that's that's the nice thing about charcuterie board you can change each bite mm. no two bites are the same right. you really can kind of get creative yeah you can put some honey on one or jam on another and, Absolutely. and have an olive on one yeah, or pistachios going on there yeah mm. for sure mm. so buttery huh 
I love so bar, yeah, the, the texture. triple cream. Yeah, it's mm. really good. And when that gets to room temperature, you'll notice that texture get ooey and gooey. That's what you want to see. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. I love brie. I'll eat it right out of the fridge. But let the, your cheese come to room temperature. And I promise, you know, if you don't like brie or you don't like manchego, try it again when it comes to that good room temperature. The texture changes entirely. The flavors really get amplified. Mm. So... Yeah. You know, it might convert some people. <laughs> yeah. Are you always kind of shopping around or looking around for different, oh, new and different always. things to put in your charcuterie always. boards? Always. Yeah. I mean, I feel like it's part of the job. You have to kind of know what's out there. I will say the cheese aisle can be super intimidating, right? You walk into Whole Foods or wherever you shop and you see so many options, 60 different infused cheddars. I mean, it can be kind of overwhelming. Um, but a tip I always give people is most grocery stores actually have a little basket of different odds and ends that they were going to chuck and there may be a dollar two dollars and that's actually how i got to learn about some of these cheeses and what they taste like pour yourself a glass of wine and enjoy these different samples before you commit to buying maybe a whole wedge that could be you know up there in price cheese is not cheap mm, yeah it can be pretty <laughs> but um pricey, yeah. but yeah there's so many out there and yeah. it's fun it's a fun way to try them before committing yeah so and is there really no right or wrong way to do a charcuterie board there really isn't i mean again the main thing that's like you can't really get away from this is premium ingredients you don't want things that um you know they're just yeah. not you know you want the quality yeah you stuff. want the quality if you can shop local great yeah. that's actually better um but yeah you want to you want to play around you know I, I say it's more about the brand than it is like the location like people ask me well can i buy something from stop and shop can i buy something from aldi whole foods it it's more about the brand so if the brand is carried in all three sure it's not so much uh, about the store because <laughs> i you know you can find a lot of great things at every store um people have their preferences um but yeah you just want to make sure you're getting reputable ingredients and that they're premium that's mm -hmm. going to really elevate the whole board right so if people want to find out if they want to order a board from you maybe take a class or yeah. two and learn more about all of this how do they contact you so www.theperfectparcel.biz i'm also on social media very active on there so if there's any questions you can always shoot me a dm or an email um but yeah you'll see like i said this work is very visual so i always i almost gravitate towards sending people to my social media handles than yes. i do the website although there's a lot on there too um so you can really see videos reels pictures of what it is i create and either get inspired or decide to purchase one Great. Awesome. Crystal Papino, the perfect parcel. Thank you so much for coming in. Yeah, thanks for having me. Make sure you check her out and order one and then maybe learn to make, make one yourself and uh, definitely it'll make you go. Mmm.